With this, I ask the question, what is the most dangerous thing which one could possibly do during these plagued times of hours today? Is it, for example, to be on the receiving end of somebody's sneeze? Is it, for example, to shake hands and not wash hands? Is it perhaps to not pile your food at home sufficiently? Is it perhaps to be in the middle of a congested, busy crowd? What is the most dangerous thing that you and I could be doing during these times? It is none of those things that I just mentioned. The single most dangerous thing which you and I could be doing during this time is to continue as usual with respect to sins. And these were the words of An-Nu'man ibn Bashir, the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, إِنَّ الْهَلَكَةَ كُلَّ الْهَلَكَةَ أَن تَعْمَلَ بِمَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ فِي زَمَنِ الْبَلَاءِ He said that the truest meaning of devastation and ruins for a person is when he commits, he continues to commit sins during times of calamities. Is when he insists upon continuing his ways during times of calamities. La ilaha illallah. So despite what he is seeing, he's not changing. A calamity is there, which is the indicator of death. But his sins, his habits, his laziness, they have not changed. What is that the sign of? Allahu Akbar. A sign of halaka, a ruin, a sign of devastation for a person. And that is why Allah Almighty, he said clearly, فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا وَلَكِنْ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Why is it not that when our punishment came to them, they did not humble themselves, but their hearts became hard. Why did they not humble themselves when the punishment came? Allah gives the answer. May Allah protect us from being this answer. Because their hearts were hard. Look at how travel has come to a complete standstill. Parties have, have been cancelled. Music industry has been silenced. Cinemas have become just dust ridden. Tourist destinations, ghost towns, presidents and policy makers, people in power, celebrities, all gone into self isolation. Freedoms suffocated. All of which not only shows the supremacy of Allah as we established, but also shows the bitter consequences of sins when they prevail. Underline that word prevail. And that is why the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, when he was asked a question by his wife, Zainab bintu Jahsh, Ya Rasulullah, anahliku wa fina salihun, Messenger of Allah, is it possible for us to be destroyed whilst there are still righteous people in our midst? He said, Naam, yes, it is possible. إِذَا كَثُرَ الْخَبَثِ When evil dominates. Yes, he said, it is possible. When evil dominates. So the COVID-19 has uncovered, alhamdulillah, a clear way forward for, for everyone who cares. A complete overhaul in an attitude towards worship, towards sins, towards business, towards dress code, towards relationships, towards behavior, towards visions in life and a mission for Allah. It has given us a clear way forward, an overhaul with respect to these things. And I say this, my dear brother, my dear sister, if man still is not stirred into change despite these calamities that he is seeing around him or her, then he or she is to realize that the internal calamity that they are suffering is far more serious than the pandemic one. To conclude, on a positive note, on a, on a practical note, here are a few recommendations for yourselves and myself moving forward. Number one, let us intensify our acts of worship. See it as an obligation. Really, prolong your prostration. Prolong your dua to Allah till that tear comes down. Take care of your fasts, my brother. Sister, those days of siyam that you haven't made up in the Ramadan before, make them up. Allow your heart to adore Allah Jalla Jalaluhu more than ever before and don't be distracted, please. And that is why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the famous hadith of Muslim on the authority of Ma'aqil ibn Yasar, he said, Al-ibadatu fil harji kahijratin ilay. Worshipping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala during times of turmoil brings the same reward as migrating to me. Allahu Akbar. Imam al-Nawawi, he said, that is because during times of turmoil, people are talking, following the news, and they are so busy, and no one is concentrating, no one has his head screwed on. 
Therefore, if despite these events, you're able to withdraw from time to time and to worship Allah Almighty with devotion, it means you are a special category of people and you qualify yourself for this reward of migrating to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is number one, take note of it. Yeah, intensifying your acts of worship. Number two, engage in a soul search, my dear brother, my dear sister. Every night, if it's possible, track down those sins, write them down. Those shortcomings of yours, I do the same, let us isolate them and let us create a plan to overcome them. This exercise that I'm suggesting to you is actually one of the reasons why Allah sends difficult times like ours. Didn't Allah Almighty say, أَوَلَا يَرَوْنَ أَنَّهُمْ يُفْتَنُونَ فِي كُلِّ عَامٍ مَرَّةً أَوْ مَرَّتَيْنِ ثُمَّ لَا يَتُوبُونَ وَلَا هُمْ يَذَّكَّرُونَ Don't they see, Allah said, that they are put to test once or twice a year, but then they don't repent, nor do they think reflect so the reason why they are put to test once or twice a year so that they may repent and think that is exercise number two a soul search find those sins and let us eradicate them dear brothers and sisters number number three a family search a family search seek to improve your personal well-being and health and prosperity by looking out for your family members even if it's just through a phone call or a daily message, please, dear brothers and sisters. The Messenger وسلم, gave a beautiful promise in this department. He said, He said that the reward or the good deed that brings about the quickest reward in life is the good deed of taking care of family ties. He said, in fact, it could be that there is a family who are sinners, who are sinners, but their wealth increases and their numbers increase as a family because they are staying in touch with one another. They are staying in contact. Allahu Akbar. There's actually no less than 15 narrations of the Prophet Wasallam that tell us that taking care of family ties actively extends a person's life. That is number three. Number four, try to aid those who are aiding Help those who are helping. It would be so good to see an initiative of some sort to create a system. Think about it. Maybe it's you, dear brother, dear sister, who will do this. Where, for example, the shopping requirements of nurses, for example, are arranged for them. Similar to the systems, alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, that we have for the elderly. Due to the selfish shopping habits of a lot of us at this moment in time a lot of these nurses are struggling to make ends meet they're struggling after maybe a 24-hour shift to go to their local grocery store and to find food and to eat healthily because of the selfish way people are buying there's nothing left on the shelves by the time they're finished they finish their shifts and these are the same people who are struggling to be healthy are the people whom you and i will be turning to during our lowest moments and weakest points the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said the best of all people are those who are most beneficial to others. Maybe that person can be you. Another one of these suggestions could be for the mosques that have decided to close their doors. This requires investigation. I don't know the legalities of it. Maybe to investigate the possibility of offering your space to a nearby hospital who may be struggling for space up until Allah has mercy upon us and we're able to function as a masjid normally again and allows Allah allows for, for, for relief to arrive. This requires investigation. Number number six, give Islamic loans. Brothers and sisters, not all of us have the luxury of working from home. A lot of us will be struggling to make ends meet now. And even if there is a, a bursary or a grant from the government, people are still struggling. Revive this much neglected act of worship, giving Islamic loans. If you are blessed enough to be able to offer it, make yourself known. And many, many of our predecessors actually preferred to give an Islamic loan than to even give in charity, subhanAllah. Finally, number seven, settle your scores at once. If there is somebody whom you have wronged, if there is money that you owe, if there is an outstanding dispute, now is the time to settle them. Don't allow the situation to escalate, as many predict will happen with the pandemic, before you settle your scores with your loved ones or your friends or even those whom you do not love. And realize that if you, my brother, my sister, you do not do this and there is still something outstanding, your dispute will automatically be deferred to the day of judgment. And that is not a good situation to be in. In conclusion, we are confident, inshallah, that this trial shall pass it has to pass 
Our concern must not be just the passing of the trial. Our concern must be our state that we will be in when the trial eventually passes. Will we be unmoved, unchanged, the same people we were weeks or months ago? Don't wait, my dear brother, my dear sister, for the ideal circumstance to arise to worship Allah and to repent and reform yourself and live by visions. No, because those ideal circumstances will never come about. Rather, you and I, we have to engineer the circumstances of present to serve our aims of glorifying Allah and entering paradise. As our predecessors, they would say, سيروا إلى الله عرجاً ومكاسير فإن انتظار الصحة بطالة They would say, travel to Allah with your limbs and with your injuries because waiting for health to come is a cause for idleness. Brothers and sisters in Islam, in Islam don't sit on the sidelines watching the events unfold as if you're watching a film that you have no role to play in. You are involved in this. You are the star of the show. All eyes are on you. So I ask you, my dear brother, my dear sister, to let your awakening be seeded in this trial of ours today.